Hey, how you doing? It's Rick Claus, Senior Technical Evangelist at Microsoft Canada. This is a screencast of the demos for a session that I presented at TechEd North America, TechEd New Zealand, and TechEd Australia, and it's called Get Out of Dodge, Migrating to Windows Server 2008 R2 X64. In case you're wondering, those codes for North America, WSV310, New Zealand was WSV302, and Australia was SRV307. Want to find out more about me? Check out my main website at regularitguy.com or about.me slash rickclaws. Okay, this is demo number two. It's called Migration of DHCP, the good, the bad, the DHCP ACK. I've got a couple of servers again in use. I'm going to be switching back and forth, so just to give you guys a heads up. My main server I'm using as my, my home base, if you will, is W2K8R2-DC once again. This time my source server is server 2003R2. It is called Contoso-DHCP. It has a single scope with a couple of leases that are already occupied and also a reservation. And I'll be migrating that over to my target system, which is once again a server 2008 R2 core install. And he's called Contoso-DHCPT. And this time I'm going to bring in my client system, Windows 7, with the RSAT tools on it to do some proof that it worked and also some verification as well. He's called Win7 Client. Let's get started. Here we are in my server core box. I'm just going to go ahead and add the Windows feature to install DHCP server. There goes the install. Pretty simple. Next up after the install, I just want to go ahead and check to make sure the service did not start automatically. And you can get that with a get service DHCP server. And we're all good. Now over here on our main 2003 DHCP system, I just want to fire off the DHCP admin console just so you can see here that I do in fact have an active scope, the 10 scope, and I have some active leases. And on top of that, I also happen to have decided to put in, just to show you that it's working, a reservation of 198 for Exchange Server. Using the standard practices of going ahead and doing a backup, because you should always back things up before you go ahead and make changes, even though we're not going to directly change stuff on the system, we can always back out. I'm just going to go ahead and make a new folder here called DHCP Backup under my source directory and run a standard backup using uh, the DHCP console. From there, it's time to actually start doing the migration. So back in the PowerShell window, I'm going to use the export Smink server settings command line. And this is along with a bunch of switches. The first one is feature ID DHCP to tell you what feature that I want to go off and do the migration of. Bring along with that the users for all users that are locally installed on the system, all groups as well, in case there are some specialized groups that have been used. Uh, I am going to migrate the IP configuration of this box as well because it's important that DHCP servers have the same IP address. And I want to export this uh, this uh, migration file to a path that I'm storing on my temporary server called Hyper-V-1 migration data slash DHCP and give me your verbose information. Now all export files require a password, so I'm just going to lock that down. It's going to collect that data up and store it and then put it up on that server for me to be able to pull into on my other guy. Pretty simple stuff. Now this is going to chug along for a little bit and give me a response to say everything was successful. Nice and easy. You can go up here and see the scope that was migrated and all the things that were going across with the different settings. Everything was true. Everything was good. So uh, we're all set to go to continue on with this guy here. Now, outside of PowerShell, I'm also going to have to go in here and uh, deauthorize the system from being used as a DHCP server with an Active Directory. So to do that, I'm going to use NetSH, go inside the DHCP area, and do a delete server with a full server name contoso-dhcp.corp.contoso.com and then press enter. Oh, and I forgot of course to put in the server IP address, so let's do that command again and this time include the IP address of uh, 192.168.10.50 to remove them correctly from the Active Directory as being an authorized and managed server. Getting out of there, I don't need to do anything else to this box, so I'm just going to quickly take a document of its IP configuration settings. I am going to need to know its MAC address for the source scope that will be used in a command line a little bit later on. So I found the easiest way to capture this was simply doing an IP config slash all and then dumping it to a text file once again on my temporary migration data share 
slash DHCP, and I'm calling this guy ipconfig.txt. I'm all done with this guy. I'm just going to do a shutdown, slash S, and then slash T for a five-second delay, and then turn this guy off. He's no longer required. He's all done. Heading over here back to our temporary server. That's running server core. I'm going to do an ipconfig slash all on this guy as well because I have to know his MAC address also for that command line. So I'm just going to open up a uh, command prompt to keep a separate window open, do an ipconfig all, and then I can basically keep that in memory in mind for when I need to use that for my command line. Back over here on the PowerShell prompt, I'm just going to open up the notepad that contains my uh, IP config, and I'm going to keep that guy handy too for just a moment when I combine them together on that migration uh, command line. Now, once again, these these command lines are going to be rather long, so I uh, find it much easier to pre pre create these text files and then open them up and copy and paste them into my server core box. Uh, you can have access to these easily enough as well, uh, just by following the documentation that's part of the migration guide. So here's that big long command. You can see that it's uh, looking for a source MAC and a destination MAC. And so my source MAC address is the original MAC address of the original box. Destination MAC is obviously going to be the one from the server core box. So to get these, I've got that one notepad file, it's right there. This is the one from the source. I'm just going to quickly grab that physical address. There she be. Copy that into the clipboard. Don't need him anymore. And then go over here and paste them in the source. And then from the command window, I have the destination MAC address. There we go. Hit it and mark this guy to copy him into the clipboard. And then also go and paste him into this command line that I'll be running. Now obviously this would have to be repeated for all the different source and destination MAC addresses that are used for multiple scopes. Highlighting all of that guy there, copying him. And then bringing him down inside my PowerShell environment to go ahead and to execute that script. And before I do, I just realized that I'm going to have to update uh, the name of my system here. But let's take a look at this command line. It's going to go through and do a feature ID of DHCP, all users, all groups, IP config as well, source physical address, destination physical address, and then force it to take place and also worry about the path. Watch that little bar there. It's going to go ahead and freeze up on me as this particular system needs to uh, be reconnected to again because the IP address has been migrated now. So my remote desktop session has just ended. Let me reconnect back up again. Here we are reconnected. And we can see that the migration has taken place successfully. Here's the verbose look at everything else. You can see the groups and the users, and there's the actual scope and all the information, and it's now all there. Now, continuing along with this, now that the settings and the data has been migrated, I also now have to go in and do an NetSH to authorize this guy to be a DHCP server. So, good old NetSH, DHCP. I'm going to add the server, Contoso dash DHCP T. I didn't bother changing the name dot corp dot contoso dot com because this particular DHCP server is only referenced through its IP address, which is 192.168.10.50, which is the same as the old IP address. Very important for that for the clients to be able to refine their leases and their DHCP servers in the past when they have to go through renewals. And now that he's been authorized, I'm going to go ahead and do a start service DHCP server. 
have a little bit of a wait for the server to start. And then we're all good. So let's go have a take a look at that over on the client side now as well. Here we are on Win7 Client. It's a system that is using DHCP. And he happens to have the remote server administration tools installed. So here's my DHCP manager, currently not configured to look at anybody. Let's open them up here and then have them attach up to and look at any managed and authorized servers. Now you can see that in the DHCP or in the Active Directory, you can see my DHCP servers listed as being authorized. Here is the IPv4 scope that is now created and imported for the 10 scope. And I have some active leases as well as my reservation listed there for exchange, still listed and still good to go. All came in from the migration tool. Now, proof of the pudding to make sure this all works. Let's actually go in here to a command prompt and do a good old fashioned IP config to show my addresses and then go ahead and do an IP config slash renew to go ahead and renew instantaneous response back again, which means the DHCP server answered and we're up and working and continuing to function just fine with DHCP. Very easy stuff. DHCP is migrated much more reliable than previous ways of doing stuff with backups and restores and everything else like that. That's it.